Twitter of sucks. Full, it's a cesspool full of miserable, miserable people. I'm gonna kill these guys tomorrow. I'm gonna. I guess I got fraud checked by the UFC champion. Thanks, bro. Uh, uh, uh. Can't understand. Oh. Dork in their mom's basement just eating Cheetos. Let's go, boys. You see the setup, the return of Meat. He's finally back from his extended hiatus. Uh, no longer is popping hot for the Martinelli. So good to see you, Meat Boy. Glad you're back in the uh, back at the grill, so to speak. And it's an interesting card this weekend. UFC Vegas 97. Quickly, we'll recap last week. I mean, I'd be remiss if even in your absence, we didn't mention your undefeated 5-0 and record of last week, including the GM3 pick when he was uh, around plus 300. So... I went two and three, but was there anything that stood out to you last week? Was it GM3 doing exactly what you said it said he would do? Was it uh, the meat lock cashing with absolute ease as our boy, the nerd, took out the crystal? What were your thoughts on last week? Yeah, nothing really surprised me, to be honest. Um, GM3 did an absolute GM3 show. Um, Michael Morales is uh, exactly what uh, you know. I kind of thought. He's that good, you know. You don't beat Neil Magny is a true levels test, you know. I, you know, I don't think he's a Gilbert Burns levels test that Sean Brady's gonna have this week, but he is one of the, that first stepping stone to get to a Gilbert Burns or Kamaru Usman levels test where you're on those top three guys. But uh, you know, uh, the fighting nerd, man, that that kid is just so dang good. It just has written future champ all over it, for sure. Top three guy, um. Yeah, I know the, the card was it was a solid card. Uh, I feel bad for Edmund. He's so young, and I just feel like he's just on his way to BKFC. So truly unfortunate. But uh, yeah, I was not really surprised by his performance. Yeah, maybe it's BKFC, maybe it's PFL. I mean, yeah, the kid is young, but at, at this point, Edmund has had a lot of UFC experience, and he keeps running into these levels tests. And I mean, when GM three is uh, sending you packing, I worry a little bit for what comes next for Edmund, but. You mentioned Michael Morales. I mean, one thing that stood out about that fight is no one really puts out Neil Magny that early and often. I mean, Neil Magny will lose occasionally, but rarely does he get smoked, like, start to finish that early. So Michael Morales, definitely a name to look out for. You wonder what's next for him. And you touched on the fighting nerd. I mean, Kyle Bahalio, I don't know if he's if he's the next title challenger or if he's one fight away. Maybe he fights Hamzad or uh, someone up there, but... The guy is honestly impressive. I thought it should have been an easy fifth-round finish. I thought that the non-stoppage from Dan Mergliata was kind of pitiful, to be honest. But nonetheless, it was dominant for him. And uh, the fighting nerds, they stay undefeated. I don't know who's going to beat these guys. So any last thoughts on last week? Or you try and jump into uh, UFC Vegas 97. I know you already mentioned Burns and Brady. You ready to go? Yep, let's go. Meat lock. Yeah, swap us through that, Meat Boy, because, again... Meatlock cashed easy light work last week. We kind of went a little hard on it, but we were very uh, bullish on Kyle Bahalio, and we're pretty bullish this week on Steve Garcia, who's taking on Kyle Nelson. And what can you say about the monster Kyle Nelson? I mean, this is a guy who has been surprising people lately. He's on a beautiful three-fight win streak. He's winning fights that people thought he was going to lose. I mean, most notably against Bill Algio, a lot of people were picking against Kyle Nelson, and he got the easy light work first round finish. And that fight against Fernando Padilla, even though Padilla was the uh, untested hype beast, Kyle Nelson was still a dog, and he got that one done easy light work. And then he smoked our boy Blake the Builder, and I'm not going to say much more about that. But nonetheless, Kyle Nelson's been looking good, and you can argue he's peaking, yet we are pretty bullish on Steve Garcia. And Steve Garcia, you can say the exact same. The dude's on a beautiful four-fight win streak. He's won five of six. He's won eight of ten. And the guy has some impressive wins. I mean, he took out Shyla Nurtebeke, easy light work. Milky Costa got absolutely smoked in a lightweight bout. And then most recently, uh, Choi Sung Woo got absolutely smoked. Performance of the night, easy light work for our boy Steve Garcia. So although both guys, you can argue, are peaking, we like Steve Garcia's wins a little bit better recently and just the way he's been getting these wins. He's been dominant. So what are your thoughts on Steve Garcia at a minus 180 favorite? What do you like about him as this week's meat lock? And is it going to be early and often against the monster? Yeah, you know, Steve Garcia, his recent recipe has been KO early and often, and I think that's what's going to happen. The mean machine is coming, and he's me cashing the green. Um, he's been looking really great, and uh, I think he might be a little too fast and too, you know, seasoned for uh, Kyle Nelson. 
Yeah, he's he's bigger, he's younger, he has the reach advantage, the height advantage. You gotta imagine he has the speed and power advantage, because while Kyle, Kyle Nelson is no slouch anywhere, right? He's like deceptively good in all areas. Steve Garcia, we gotta imagine, is just gonna have that stand-up advantage, even if it's a slight one. And if you look at topology, they're kind of seeing it the same way for the mean machine. 78% rolling with Steve Garcia, 22% rolling with the monster, and I was a little bit surprised by all the brown. I mean, we know Steve Garcia has been putting these dudes out easy light work lately, so perhaps Tapology thinks it's just more of the same, but Kyle Nelson historically is a dude who is pretty difficult to put out. I mean, I know Billy Q finished him, but that was back in 2020, and when he loses, it's usually by decision or sometimes submission. So are you at all surprised by the Tapology metrics, or do you agree and what Steve Garcia has been doing recently, a.k.a. first, second round KO finishes, he's going to do to Kyle Nelson? Yeah, you know, I think he is going to finish Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson, he has been looking good. He's on a nice little fight win streak, but I think his time is done. Um, I just don't really see, you know, uh, Kyle Nelson being that, you know, top tier fighter when I could see a lot of potential. If Steve Garcia keeps leveling up, keeps getting better, I think he could reach that top 10, uh, you know, early and often. Yeah, and j just to quickly uh, put a, a bow on Steve Garcia, I mean, some of his other wins, he finished Chase Hooper. Literally ever since then, Chase Hooper has been dominating and is really looking great. So that's a win that has aged nicely. And then just before he came into the UFC, his last fight in LFA, who did he get an easy light work finish over? Our boy, Chepe Mariscal, who literally hasn't lost a UFC fight either. So Steve Garcia, when you really do a deep dive, has some impressive wins. So we like him as a meat lock here. He's minus 180. We'll be keeping it very simple. Throwing down 180 to net 100. Get us that second meat lock in a row. The nerd got us back on track last week with that heavy hammer. So hopefully the mean machine keeps things going and uh, keeps us in the green, like you mentioned. So I got Steve Garcia. Obviously, I'll go by finish. I'm with you. Let's keep this thing going. Any last thoughts on the meat lock? No, I think it's another lock. Easy, light, work, KO early and often. Yeah, should be easy light work KO early and often. Let us know in the comments if you agree. Do you think the Mean Machine gets this one done? Or are you shilling for the monster? But nonetheless, swap us through, Meat Boy, because uh, it's one of your boys and a fighter that we always love to break down. Andre Petrovsky, a minus 278 favorite in this one, taking his 11-3 record up against Dylan Budka, who is 7-3. He's plus 225, and he made his debut as essentially fodder for Cesar Almeida. Got absolutely smoked by him, and that was a fight that was essentially designed for Caesar. Uh, the UFC is trying to prime him, and they gave him the uh, prime rib of a setup layup to get this thing going. And uh, in this one, it's like I think they're trying to get Andre Petrovsky maybe back on track too, because while he did rebound effectively against Josh Fremd most recently in July, things were getting a little bit sketchy for Petrovsky. I mean, this is a guy who had won six in a row, then suddenly gets finished back-to-back, -back, won by a debutante middleweight Michelle Pajeda, which no shame in that, but I think maybe a little bit more concerningly was the next loss to Jacob Malkoon and perhaps the way that he lost by eating that strange uh, soccer kick to the body, but it was more so caused by him knocking himself out on Jacob Malkoon's hip bone. It was a pretty interesting scenario and uh, a sketchy one nonetheless, but it was good to see Petrovsky rebound, and they're giving him another rebound opportunity here against Dylan Bumka. So do you think that's similar to the Dylan versus Cesar Almeida fight that He's just not a UFC caliber fighter, and Petrosi goes out here and absolutely smokes this kid light work, or is Petrosi going to lose this one too? Yeah, you know, the, the the hip bump, you know, dancing KO flop was one of the most bizarre things ever, and this truly is a, uh, you know, a sizzler meat steak lock in my opinion, but... It's just really hit or miss with Petrovsky. I mean, you know, he's getting knocked out by butt cheeks. Uh, I don't know if he's going to maul this guy or get knocked out by Bud Cuh. So we'll see. Uh, Andre should win this. I have him winning this. I think he'll win by submission. That's if he doesn't get the old hip blast, but we will see, I guess. This is an interesting matchup. Yeah, the self-KO uh, via hit blast was a true lost art. And uh, you wonder against a guy like Dylan Budka, a.k.a. the Mindless Hulk, if that can replicate itself here. But if you look at Tapology, they don't think that it's going to be like that. 93% is rolling with Petrovsky, only 7% going with the Mindless Hulk. And it's basically beige on both sides. So 
The Tapology backers are overwhelmingly picking Andre, but they think it's going to be a snooze fest decision similar to that Josh Frem contest most recently. Do you buy that, or do you think there actually could be some juicy value for a Petrosky finish? I think there could be a Pet uh, Petrosky finish, but uh, I doubt it's KO. Maybe a ground and pound KO. It definitely could be, but it's it's going to be on the ground, that's for sure. I got to imagine it's got to be a submission. Um, he, he should be, I mean, with his, you know, his strength and skill and his team that he's training with, he should be able to ragdoll this guy and send him back to BKFC where he came from the mindless Hulk. I don't know if he should be in the UFC, but I, I guess we'll see. This is a good levels test. You know, he did lose on his debut versus, uh, Almeida, which he's no joke when it comes to striking, uh, but lacks in the grappling aspect. Now he's fighting a more of a grappler and not a striker. So maybe this is a better matchup for him. We will see. Yeah, I think to your point, I think Petrovsky by submission could have some life. I mean, Dylan Butka has only lost by strikes and or close decisions, but you never know. Petrovsky's pretty lethal down there. At the beginning of his UFC tenure, he was picking up a lot of submission victories. So if and when this fight hits the mat, which we anticipate it going, perhaps Petrovsky's able to get one of his patented chokes down there. So I'm going to go Petrovsky by submission. I'm going to be inspecting what those numbers look like just because it seems like tap if Tapology is overwhelmingly bullish on the decision, then there might be some juicy value somewhere for that TKO or the submission. So that's what I'll be inspecting, and that's where I'll be going officially. However... If the Mindless Hulk comes in here and gets a hit blast KO uh, and Petrosky is uh, asleep on the canvas, that to me wouldn't be the craziest thing. So temper the expectations, perhaps maybe exclude Petrosky money line from parlays because uh, you never really know with this guy what the heck's going on. So I'll roll with you for now. I got Petrosky by finish, but a little bit reluctantly. Any last thoughts? No, it's a, it should be a fun fight, interesting fight for the Spartan. We'll see if, uh, if the hit blast gets him or not. Yeah, it should be fun, and uh, if it is a good outcome for him, maybe he won't be the uh, opening fight on the next card he's a part of because it seems like he's the curtain jerker for every fight card he's on. But we'll see what happens. Uh, it is a nice little Philly sandwich, though, right? Petrosi's starting this card off. Brady's going to finish it. But before we even get to that one, swap us through me, boy, because uh, Ryan Spann, your boy, Ryan Man, Superman Spann, is taking on OSP, Ovin St. Prue. The patented uh, St. Prue Von Flew choke could be in play here because if you remember the last time we saw OSP, he was like a plus 450 dog against Kenzie and Jetroku. And the only person in the uh, YouTube MMA prediction sphere that picked OSP was you. You said that he was going to get that one done. I thought there was no way that a seemingly prime Kennedy would go out there and lay an egg against OSP, but. OSP proved even at 40, the dude still has a lot left and is still a guy that's going to take out a lot of these dudes in the UFC. And when you look at Ryan Man, Superman Span, this is a guy who has double digit wins. He at one point was maybe one or two fights away from a title, but this guy's lost three straight. He's gotten finished in two of them. And most recently it was against Bum Dog, Bogdan Guskov. And I've been giving Bum Dog maybe too much of a hard time over here at Meat Boy MMA and Perhaps I need to reevaluate how good Bumdog Bum, Bum Dog Goskov is, but he got absolutely smoked by Bumdog, and that was discouraging for me, and maybe enough to uh, get me considering picking OSP in this one. So in this one, are you going to go with your boy OSP again in a fight where he's again a sizable dog, or is Ryan Man Superman Span going to be too young, too fast, too sharp, and OSP is going to lose again, which he also likes to do? Yeah, you know, Ryan is a, is a hit or miss kind of guy, lately been missing big time, you know, losing to Kida, losing to Anthony Linehart Smith, which that's, and then uh, Bomb Dog, uh, Guskov, man, that's pretty bad. When Ryan Superman Span was one of the top prospects, I mean, he KO'd Dominic Reyes, he beat Ian Kunzilaba, like, these are no joke guys, which. Looking back, maybe it's not as impressive as it is. That being said, I think OSP is a legit levels test. I think OSP is going to choke him out first or second round early and often. First or second round early and often. Yo, this is actually pretty funny. Fresh off the grill, Meat Boy. As of one hour ago, check out this headline. OSP illness drops fight with Ryan Spann from UFC Vegas 97. So in our four years of doing this, Meat Boy, this is a Meat Boy first, but unfortunately Ryan Spann versus OSP is not actually happening this week. So I'm going to slow the breakdown down. We're going to uh, pick this breakdown back up next time they fight, but you don't just swap us through the next one because this fight Swapping. got canceled. Crazy.
swapped. Swap swap us through then, because uh, that's a Meat Boy first. Grill it. But nonetheless, Cody Durden, this fight is actually on taking on Matt Schnell. And this one was originally going to be Matt Schnell versus Alessandro Costa. And Costa is a young, hype beast, very exciting prospect at the flyweight division. But Cody Durden stepping in on short notice because Costa pulled out. And while Costa was like a minus 600 favorite, I'm a little bit surprised to see Cody Durden. Yes, he's only minus 305, but... Cody Durden is a guy who has lost two straight, got finished in both of them, and he was looking great in his last fight just this past July against Bruno Silva, but he ended up getting smoked in that second round, ate some heavy shots, and was almost unconscious out there and lost by TKO. So Cody Durden has had sort of a rough spell lately. He had one four straight. He was smoking guys, easy to light work, but it has been a little bit of a hiccup most recently, and... Matt Schnell, I mean, it's been a lot of a hiccup most recently, right? He's also lost two straight, got slept out cold in both of them. He's lost three of four. It's basically been bad news for Matt Schnell, but at plus 240, this is a guy who is usually in competitive fights. I mean, he'll be throwing bombs of his own. It's just he's been getting slept by the return meat bombs lately. But that fight against Sumu Darji, we talk about all the time, fight of the night, he was basically asleep. Slept by Sumu, but Sumu couldn't just land that final punishing blow. And as a result, Matt Schnell was the one picking up the second round finish in the end. But that at this point was over two years ago. And like I said, it's been pretty rough since then. So what are your thoughts on this one? Do you like Matt Schnell perhaps at plus 240 value against a guy in Cody Durden who has lost two straight and is coming in off about five days notice? Or is Matt Schnell getting KO'd for a third straight fight? Yeah, you know, man, uh, very tough. Uh, you know, I, I do like the odds of Matt Schnell. That is crazy juicy odds because I feel like both these guys are very similar in, in their level of fighting capability. Um, but uh, Matt Schnell's grappling is pretty freaking good. His submission game is no joke. And Cody Dernan, four of his losses, of his six losses, are from submission. So that is a positive sign if you're looking at the dog odds. That's going to get me my juice flowing. But, uh, you know, it's kind of mind-blowing to see Cody Dernan's short notice being this big of a favorite. I mean... Is Jake Hadley and JP by, you know, are those wins that justifiable to think that this guy is maybe future champ? Because plus 300 shouldn't be anyone except for like a future GOAT. I just don't see it. So I got to go with Matt Schnell. I think Matt Schnell is going to win this. I think he's going to win by submission. And uh, if Matt can keep this a grapple heavy, high intensity pace, he should be able to burn out Cody. Uh, being on the short notice, and he should get that submission. I truly think so. I do like these odds. I'm going to go to Matt Schnell via submission. I think uh, he's uh, ironed the chin up and no more glass jaw chin. Yeah, it's an interesting stylistic matchup, right? Because Matt Schnell is a good grappler. He does have sneaky submissions, but we know Cody Durden to be like an insane pressure uh, wish version of Marab style fighter where he is always pushing the pace. He's always trying to get takedowns. He doesn't ever seem to gas out. Like he's one of those CEO of EPO type guys, but we've also only ever seen him with full camp. So perhaps coming into it on short notice, maybe, uh, maybe there is a little bit more to that. And, uh, the gas tank starts to wane a little bit, but I don't know because Cody historically has always been a uh, relentless pressure type fighter. So it's an interesting matchup when the pressure wrestler goes up against the sneaky submission artist also in the apex cage. So it's going to be a little bit smaller, but it's a fascinating stylistic matchup for sure. Topology is pretty bullish on Cody Durden. 77% is rolling with him even on short notice and it's about half and half. Half think that he's going to get that brown KO, so Matt Schnell is asleep again. Do you see Durden having any KO life? I mean, I know you're picking Schnell, but are you at all surprised, given that Durden isn't really a KO artist by all the brown that is backing a KO uh, for Durden on topology? Yeah, I, I would be very surprised um, if Durden snuffs Matt Schnell. He, he's not got this insane, immaculate power. Um, like Steve was saying, he's no joke when it comes to striking. Um, so it kind of makes sense, but Cody Durden, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, if I had to say Cody Durden maybe wins by decision, maybe KO, but man, I, I got to imagine Matt Chanel should be able to rag doll him from beginning to end, either decision or submission. So Matt Chanel, this, this seems like just juicy money, uh, no brainer to me. 
Yeah, it's a fun matchup, and I mean, one out of four people uh, is taking Matt Schnell on Tapology, and the majority is Copper. Maybe it's pretty close for Copper and Decision, but a lot of people saying that Matt Schnell wins by submission as well. So I'm going to take the flip side, Meepo. I don't love the minus 300-ish value for Cody Durden, but I do think he's going to get this one done. I just, I don't know. I picked Matt Schnell recently, and uh, I was a little bit worried after that last contest when he got absolutely slept out cold by Steve Ursek, and then we just saw Steve Ursek get absolutely slept out cold just a few weeks ago, so I don't know what to make of that one, but I'm going to take Cody Durden. I'm going to take him by probably snooze fest decision. I can see him not necessarily gassing out in the second and third round, but getting on top and making sure he stays there, thwarting the defensive attacks that Matt Schnell will be offering and managing to just uh, position over submission, earn himself a decision win. So I'm going to go Cody by what turns out to be a likely boring decision, but I'm hopeful it's an absolute slobber knocker, Matt Schnell versus Sumu Darji style, and maybe it's a double KO. It definitely could be a double KO, to be honest. Short notice, glass jaw, possibly Schnell chin. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'm degenerate. I like these odds. Yeah, I don't blame you. Let us know in the comments. Are you taking Danger Match Schnell as a about a plus 250 dog? Or is Cody getting this one done? Or is it a uh, Cody double KO? We shall see nonetheless. But swap us through the next one, Meat Boy. Jessica Andrade taking on Natalia Silva. It's the co-meet and another interesting fight as far as the odds are concerned, right? Because Jessica Andrade, right, former champ, 26 and 12 overall, is a plus 245 dog. And she's no uh, secret. Like, she's no, uh, she's been a dog in some of her recent fights. But in this one against Natalia Silva, who, yes, obviously very talented, 5-0 and in the UFC, she is a little bit untested, right? And she has some nice wins. Ada Ujo, Andrea Lee. Even the Jasmine Jazz Devicious win is aging nicely, but Jessica Andrade has gone in there against literally everyone, and she's picked up some nice wins recently. Like it's not like she's riding a Tony Ferguson like L streak. She is just has won two in a row. She beat Marina Rodriguez at UFC 300 and finished Mackenzie Dern performance of the night less than a year ago. So it's not like we have haven't seen good versions of Jessica Andrade these last few fights. So without diving too too much into the hype beast that is Natalia Silva, are you at all surprised that she's a minus three hundred five favorite? And similar to Matt Schnell, are you liking Jessica Andrade at plus two forty value? Man, I you know I am a big fan of Silva. I think she's an absolute beauty, uh, an absolute uh, you know the future possibly of the division you know she's young she's very talented but man jessica andrage hits like a truck and uh you know you just cannot deny that i think jessica andrage might be one of the worst fighters but there's not too many high level fighters in that division so she's actually one of the best um she kind of knocks out everybody she overpowers them her strength is it's it's really unmatched in my opinion it's pretty crazy she pretty much bullies these girls that's what it feels like a lot of times um uh but then you know you have the very skilled fighters where they kind of just walk walk all over her but uh i think jessica andrage especially with those odds disrespect man i mean what what is what is silva gonna do to jessica andrage that andrage hasn't already seen right like best case silva wins by decision maybe almost gets knocked out once or almost almost gets hit and is just in and out smooth but like silva doesn't have this immaculate ko power she's not going to finish andrage andrage is so freaking durable so tough to where i like this where you have three rounds of jessica andrage just needs one punch to connect and silva goes to the shadow realm and at those odds i gotta ride andrage um you know if the odds are different i think i'd be leaning more silva but with these juicy odds i i just can't disrespect andrage to be honest um i mean silva's last uh ko win was versus victoria uh lenardo aka mm -hmm. fury she has six losses five of them are by ko so that's who we're dealing with so we know that andrage is not getting slept so we're safe there we know that she's not getting submitted her grappling is very good her submission game is very good um it's gonna be a point battle for silva or Silva gets knocked out. I'm going to go with a knockout uh, with these juicy odds. This just seems like another no-brainer. Uh, the odds makers have this wrong, unless I'm missing something. 
Yeah, a lot of great points mentioned, and I like how you touched on the Natalia, like, because I can see some responding with, well, Natalia Silva, she has two finishes in the UFC, but to your point, Victoria Leonardo gets slept every time she fights, and then her other finish by TKO was against Teresa Bleda, who is truly awful. So when Natalia Silva is in there against tougher women, it usually goes the distance, and she is able to outpoint them, but none of the wins are quite on the level of Jessica Andrade. I mean, Araujo, again, she's tough. Andre Lee's tough. Jasevich is tough. But Andrade, you would like to think, presents a different challenge and a different level of experience. And, you know, one might expect Jessica Andrade to be 37, 38, 39, but she's only 32. And while, yes, she has accumulated some damage and has a wealth of experience, I mean, she is she still has a little bit of youth in her. And I think she's demonstrated that throughout those last two contests. But if we look at Tabology Meat Boy, 72% is bullish on the hype beast Silva. 28% going with Andrade. A lot of beige on both sides, so they think a decision is imminent. If you are taking Jessica Andrade, and I'm kind of still on the fence, are you picking Jessica Andrade by lethal meat bomb finish and Silva's going to sleep or any chances goes the decision? How does Andrade win? Um, I think Andrade wins by KO. Uh, Silva's going night-night. Or it could be a close fight, more close than I'm thinking, and I could see maybe a split decision on Andrade. I mean... You got to think about it, like like you said like Andrade's still young she's bounced back Mackenzie Dern TKO and then Marina Rodriguez split like those two are no joke you look at Silva who she's fought it's nowhere near the level of caliber that Jessica's fought from win or loss like Jessica's wins and obviously her losses she's been fighting the best of the best for the last four or five years maybe. Maybe six or seven. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look. Maybe ten years. She's been fighting top tier this whole time. The other girl, they've just been building her up. This is her first levels test. She could, you know, peak and succeed or, you know, dump and, you know, get scared by this moment. I don't know. It, that's hit or miss on her side. But either way, even if Silva's peaking, I still think Andrade is still that top three, top five fighter. I don't know if Silva's there yet. She hasn't fought anyone really. Yeah, I buy that a lot. And, you know, sometimes they just, for instance, if we think about uh, two weeks ago, the fighting nerd versus uh, Cannoneer, sometimes, yes, they haven't fought the highest caliber fighter in the division yet. But just because that hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't happen next. Right. And we saw that in Cannoneer versus uh, versus the nerd. So maybe we're, we're, we're uh, getting that here. But to your point, yes, Jessica Andrade, just look at her last 12 fights. They're literally all against either former champs or number one, number two, number three ranked women or hype beasts like Aaron Blanchfield or Yan Zhao Nan. I mean, she only fights against legitimate killers. So in this one, you said that you did see a pathway where it's a Jessica Andrade split decision. I'm taking Natalia Silva, meat boy, but I think it's going to be very close. And one that I'm going to assume Andrade won. But somehow the judges are going to find a way to finagle a split decision for Natalia Silva. So I like the split decision call that you are uh, that you were either leaning to or suggesting was a possibility. I just think Silva is going to be on the other end of it. So I'm going to be checking out fight ends by split or majority decision. And ultimately, I'm going to take I'm take Natalia Silva to be on the right end of that one. But in a very close competitive fight, and uh, I hope Andraj goes out there and sleeps her with a meat bomb because it'd be a nice. Uh, a nice reminder to a lot of UFC fans that she's still here. She still has a lot left to offer, and uh, it wasn't a mistake putting her on this co-meet. So I'll take Silva by simp decision. Any last thoughts on the co-meet? No, it should be a funny bout. Um, it should be interesting to see all the cat, uh, all the uh, um, the Andrage fans out there to see, uh, you know, how she does. Yeah, for sure. I saw where your head's at. Swap us through to the meat event. Meat Boy, it's a good one. It is our boy, Sean Brady. He's taken on Gilbert Burns as a plus 150 dog is Burns. Minus 180 is Sean Brady. And uh, Sean Brady has been uh, doing some good things in the media this week. Uh, love some of the sound bites he's producing. You saw the intro. I think that this is a great opportunity for him. And the fact that they're sticking him in a meat event suggests to me that the UFC still believes that Sean Brady could be one of their golden gooses and perhaps a future champ because when he lost his undefeated streak to Bilal Muhammad, he got absolutely smoked. And that was a fight that, I mean, your boy picked Bilal Muhammad. I know he's the champ now and everyone likes to uh, say that they've been all over Bilal Muhammad, but your boy's been picking Bilal Muhammad for the last however many fights, at least five. And I had him in that one against Sean Brady, but not a lot of people did. And 
Sean Brady was a decent favorite, got smoked, but it was good to see him return against Kelvin, right? Picked up that performance of the night finish over Gastelum. Easy, light work, and uh, just good. To, you never know how a guy's going to respond after taking that first L, right? I mean, we look to Darren Till. Some guys, uh, they never really get back that aura that they once had, and Sean Brady clearly still has his. So the UFC machine is well behind him. They see a, not a legend in Burns, but uh, an OG, a dude who's fought for the title, and a guy who's aging and on a uh, two-fight L streak, who they think can unload whatever hype remains and give it to Sean Brady. So what do you make of the matchmaking in this one? Are you surprised at all that Sean Brady is getting this uh, meet event opportunity, or is this exactly what he needs? The UFC is right to trust him with this spot, and you like him in this one over uh, Durinho. What are you thinking? Yeah, no, this is a big levels test for Sean Brady. Get him back in the, you know, the top tier level because the Bilal Muhammad TKO really set him back a little bit. But then that Kelvin Gastelum one that got his confidence back, and I think this one will also get him back. Um, I do worry that, uh, you know, Sean Brady has a Bilal uh, moment where maybe because Gilbert striking is no joke for him being a, a you know a crazy black belt grappler all that stuff. His striking is no joke. That's where, you know, Bilal Muhammad didn't really want to strike with Burns. He just ragdolled him for rounds. Now, he looks at Sean Brady and goes, wow, this is light work on the feet. Uh, and he just beat him up the whole time. And he could not get taken down because Bilal Muhammad's wrestling is very good. The new Bilal Muhammad seems that he can just do everything. Um, so, Sean Brady's got a ways to go. we got to see what he can do here, but he's got to get past this to get back to that rematch. I would love to see that rematch. I would love to see a, you know, next level Bilal, which we're seeing right now, to where we see a next level Sean uh, and redemption arc. That'd be very cool, I think. Um, but i got to lean Sean Brady, but it's definitely not my most confident picks just because I just don't know, is, is Gilbert still Gilbert? Or is he on his way out? Is the age catching up? I just, there's so many unknowns. Um, Gilbert hasn't been really looking too good. You know, just got knocked out by Jack. But I don't think Sean Brady's striking is as good as Jack's. But it's grappling significantly better than Jack's. And then he lost to Bilal Muhammad, which that was just five rounds of being ragdolled and tossed around like a baby. So... If Sean Brady does not get submitted, I think Sean Brady will do the same thing that Bilal Muhammad did, just ragdoll him for X amount of rounds. That'd be crazy if Sean Brady submits Gilbert Burns. Like, the first one to submit him, legend. That'd be crazy. But I, I kind of see this as being a decision. <sighs> TKO maybe on the ground, but I, I feel like Brady has more higher percentage of being finished than getting a finished, if that makes sense. Like, I think he'll win by decision, and Gilbert Warren, Gilbert Burns probably will win either by KO or submission. If it goes the distance, probably Sean Brady won. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, Sean Brady does win by a lot of decisions, but he is also a finisher, too. I mean, Jake Matthews got finished, Aguilera got finished, uh, and then obviously most recently Kelvin got finished as well, but... Gilbert is obviously historically a very difficult dude to put out. Yes, Jack Della did it most recently, but beyond that and Usman and then Dan Hooker way back in the day, his only losses are by decision too. So I'm very curious to see what this fight looks like when it's on the ground, if it does get there. I mean, is this one of those fights where neither guy's going to want to wrestle slash grapple and they're just going to stand and bang for five rounds? Or is each guy going to test the other in the wrestling slash grappling? Very interested to find out for sure. But uh, it's an interesting fight for me because... I mean, you mentioned the the Burns versus Jack Della fight, and yes, Jack Della got the finish, but on the scorecards, Gilbert Burns was up 2-0 on two judges and was tied 1-1 one -one on the third. So basically, if he survives that third round, he wins the fight, but he didn't survive the third round. He got finished with a minute and 17 seconds to go, and now the story is he's bad suddenly because Jack Della finished him. So it's very interesting how one round can change the entire trajectory of a fighter's career and reputation seemingly, but... Gilbert Burns, I think one criticism you can point to beyond just the two straight L's, I mean, the guy is 38, right? And he's dealing with a Sean Brady who is peak 31. He's very strong, like one of the strongest dudes in the division. And uh, he's peaking in a youthful age versus Gilbert, who might be one step, one foot out the door for sure. So if we look at Tabology, me boy, Sean Brady is getting 55%. 
45% is Gilbert Burns. And there's a lot of brown for the Burns KO. So to your point about Gilbert Burns being a phenomenal striker and maybe he even having the advantage there. Tapology, a lot of them who are picking Burns, thinks that it's going to be similar to that Bilal versus Brady fight where he's just simply, uh, simply outmatched on the feet and is going to sleep again. So I'm pretty torn on this one. What's your final pitch for why you think Sean Brady gets this one done? I mean, I know you said that it wasn't your most confident pick, but if you're ultimately leaning Sean and the odds makers obviously are too, and Tapology is ever so slightly as well, what is the pathway for him? How does he get this one done? Yeah, I think Sean Brady, he's got to do what Sean Brady does, and that's grapple heavy, put heavy pace, use his strength. He has unmatched strength his strength is so insane from what i hear um and it kind of just shows he ragdolls everyone that he's beaten except for that one loss um don't play you know gilbert burns game play his game and i think if he does that he should win um a very simple decision maybe a tko ground and pound but i don't know sean brady has never won by ko or tko so that would be crazy to to knock out or TKO Gilbert Burns would be a great thing to add to his, you know, a uh, resume. And if he submits Gilbert Burns, Gilbert's first loss by submission, Sean Brady's the GOAT, hands down, the GOAT. So I think it's going to be a decision. I think he's got to play it safe. He does not want to stand on the feet because Gilbert cracks hard. Yeah, good stuff for sure. And, you know, you're, if you're going by decision, that means you don't anticipate Sean Brady having any sort of gas tank deficiencies in those championship rounds. And this is his first main event. It'll be his first five round contest. The last time he saw a fight go beyond the third was way back in 2019 in CFFC in a fight where he defended his strap and picked up a fourth round finish. So he has had some success in the championship rounds pre UFC, but we haven't seen it yet. And we might see it against Gilbert Burns this Saturday. So very excited to see how this fight goes down. I'm going to roll with you ever so slightly, Meepo. I will take Sean Brady. I will ride the hype. I will uh, believe that he's coming back on track and is a future champ or at least a future title challenger. But if he comes in here and gets smoked by Gilbert Burns, even a 38-year-old two straight L Gilbert Burns, I'm not going to be the most surprised ever because uh, we saw what happened versus Bilal and... When Sean Brady faces a guy who brings serious adversity and serious toughness, serious grit, we've seen how that goes down. And I'm not saying Bilal is Gilbert. Or I'm not saying Gilbert Burns is Bilal. Clearly, he's not. We saw how that fight went down. But I do think Gilbert is a dog, and I don't think he's a guy showing up for a paycheck, just trying to uh, have a fight and and go home. I think this dude's a real competitor, a uh, a real winner, and I think he has a lot of life in this one. But I'll roll with you. I'll take Sean Brady. I'll take him with you. I like Sean Brady by decision, but uh, a lot of unknowns for this one for sure. Any last thoughts on the uh, meet event? It's a fun one. No, it's a fun uh, meet event. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. There's going to be a lot uh, of good prospects to see where these guys kind of are, see where their future kind of goes. Lots of ups and downs, maybe in a few cuts, maybe a few BKFCs, but this is a fun card nonetheless. Yeah, potentially enjoy some of these guys while we still got them because you never know what happens uh, on Sunday morning for sure. Lastly, Meat Boy, we attempted to break down six. Officially on the record, it'll be five since we had the uh, OSP Burnt Meat Mid Show. Are you going five and zero oh, like last week? Four and one. How do you do uh, at UFC Vegas 97? Uh, I'm feeling a four and one on this one. Four and one for meat. I'm with you. I'm going to go four and one as well. Definitely need to uh, rectify the two and three debacle of last week. So let's have a good one this week. The meat lock is obviously cashing again. Mean Machine Steve Garcia keeps the Mean Machine streak meat lock alive. Any last thoughts, Meat Boy? Glad to have you back. Yep, good to be back. Make sure to smash that meat subscribe and turn the notifications so you don't miss another meat lock. Yep.